I'm not ashamed. Why did God appear to Moses in the burning book? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Exodus on walking through the Bible. Of his word, the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Exodus chapter 3. We're going to be reading from verses 7 to 10. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Exodus chapter 3, beginning at verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppressions with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. In our last episode, we find Moses at Mount Horeb, otherwise known as Mount Sinai, in the land of Midian, which would today be Saudi Arabia. He sees a bush that is burning, but the bush is not being burned up. Out of the bush, a voice cries out, who identifies himself as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. We didn't get time to talk about it in the last episode, but if you recall from our study of Matthew, Jesus used this passage when the Sadducees challenged him about the resurrection. Listen to what he said in Matthew 22, 29 to 32. Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels of God in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Jesus used this passage here in Exodus to make a point about the resurrection. God is not a God of the dead, but of the living. By the time God spoke those words, Abraham had been dead for about 550 years. If God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living, what this means is that when we die, our spirits do not cease to exist, but they are alive, kept safe by God in a place called Hades, awaiting the resurrection day. Reading through this passage in Exodus on our own, we might miss that point, but Jesus brings it to the forefront in his discussion with the Sadducees. In verse 7, God tells Moses that he has seen the oppression of his people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of the taskmasters, for he knew their sorrows. Here the children of Israel are known as God's people. This will be the designation of Israel throughout the Old Testament, for it will be through them that the Messiah would come. Israel, however, thought that because they were the people of God, that that somehow made them better than other nations, meaning the Gentiles couldn't be saved. This was not the case, for Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the whole world, both Jews and Gentiles. Christians are the children of God, or the people of God today, when in faith they are baptized into Christ, becoming heirs of the promise of Abraham, which was salvation in Christ, according to Galatians 3, 26 to 29. That God had seen what was going on in Egypt should show us that God did not forget Israel these 430 years, nor was he blind to their suffering. Now some might ask, why did God allow them to suffer? Well, first of all, suffering is a part of this life because we live in a world of sin, but it also helps put our trust in God and produces endurance, according to James 1, 2, and 3. Moreover, there was another reason why God allowed Israel to suffer. If they had lived a luxurious life in Egypt, they would have never wanted to leave. After all, they had been in Egypt for over 400 years. None of them had ever seen Canaan. They had never traveled in the wilderness to it, nor had they engaged in battle to defeat an enemy. Why would they want to do so if life in Egypt was so great? God allowed them to suffer in order that they would trust in him for salvation, which they prayed to God for and so that they would actually follow God and go to Canaan. With the time now having come to liberate Israel from Egyptian bondage, God appeared to Moses, telling Moses that it was his job to stand before Pharaoh in order to secure Israel's release, after which he was to lead them to Canaan to conquer it. Now let's remember that this Pharaoh that was in power at the time was not the same Pharaoh that Moses had fled from 40 years earlier. Moses didn't even know if this Pharaoh would even know who he was so there shouldn't be any reason to fear this Pharaoh. However, Moses isn't going to be all that gung-ho at the following of the word of the Lord 
He is going to need to be convinced. We'll take up with Moses' response to the Lord willing in the next episode. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus chapter 3, verses 11 to 14, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.